Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to see how to add image cropping, resizing, scaling, all of that good stuff to an Angular application. So the basis of this particular tutorial is we're going to be using a library called Cropper.js. So this is a JavaScript library that we're going to be using in our Angular application. And you can see this quite cool library and it adds a lot of very critical stuff uh, to our front-end applications. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to open up our terminal, we're going to start a new project with Angular. So the assumption is that you have the Angular CLI already installed. For this version of the tutorial, the version of Angular that I'm using, so the CLI is 8.3.3, .3, and then you can see all of the other versioning information as well. Uh, just note that in the future, um, if the versions change, uh, so minor things about the framework might change as well. So there could be some differences in this tutorial, uh, but for the most part, you should be able to fill in the gap and it should work out fine. So let's go ahead and clear this terminal. I'm going to create a new project. I'm going to say ng new. I'm going to just call it image cropping example. I'm going to go ahead and say no, because this is a basic project. I'm going to be using just standard CSS. And this is going to create a new project on my desktop because that is where my terminal was pointing at. All right, after that finishes uh, correctly, uh, let's go back into our browser. So again, we're going to be using Cropper.js. Um, so this is a library on GitHub. It does have an NPM module, which we're going to be taking advantage of. Um, so let's go ahead and go back into our terminal. And let's go ahead and execute npm install. Actually, we're in the wrong directory, so I got to navigate into my directory. It's called image cropper example, image cropping example. I'm going to say npm install cropper.js, and I'm going to say hyphen hyphen save. All right, so it did install. Uh, there is one more step because we are using it uh, kind of in the browser here. Um, so we will need the CSS file. So the CSS, not the, not the JS file, the CSS file because it is critical towards actually showing all of these visual features uh, such as being able to scale and things like that. Um, so having the CSS file is very important. Um, rather than trying to use it directly from the NPM module that we just downloaded, let's just go ahead and make our lives a little easier. Let's use a CDN for this. Um, but in the end, you could actually do it however however you want. So let's go ahead and choose copy. I'm gonna copy the, um, the tag. I'm going to go into my terminal again. I'm going to open my project. I'm going to open it in, uh, in my case, I'm going to use Visual Studio Code. So I'm going to say code. I'm going to say um, just like this. I'm going to zoom in a bit so that way it's a little easier to see. What we're going to do is we're going to go into the source directory and we're going to open up our index.html file. Um, so this is where we're going to uh, paste that CSS tag. It's going to be in the header. Uh, we can do it right before the closing head tag. I'm just going to paste it in. Uh, you can see that uh, when I copied it from the CDN, it included the integrity, integrity and the cross origin attributes. Uh, that's fine. Just brought that back into one line here. Uh, that should be all that we need to handle when it comes to our index.html file. Um, now we can proceed to actually working on our example. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and open up a terminal directly in Visual Studio Code. I'm going to shrink it down a bit. Uh, what I'm going to run here is I'm going to run a command to create a new Angular component. Um, so we're going to we're going to keep all of our Cropper JS stuff in its own component, so that way we can have reusable code throughout the application. So let's go ahead and say ng g component, and I'm going to say let's call it image Cropper. So it ran, what it did is it created a new directory and a new set of files inside of the app directory. So it called it image cropper and it created a few files. So we're going to be working in the HTML file and the TypeScript file. Um, so let's, let's start doing that now. Let's, let's first start with the HTML file. Um, so the HTML file is going to be um, a visualization of our actual source image, the image that we want to edit. And then it's going to represent a visualization for the destination image. So the, the image that's kind of like a preview of what we've done to it and also something that we can download if we wanted to. Um, so let's go ahead and say div class. Actually, let's just say div. We're just going to keep it in a container for now. I'm going to say image. And I'm going to say cross origin because this is a requirement of the actual Cropper JS library for what we're trying to accomplish. Um, so this is actually going to represent our source image, uh, and we're going to make some revisions to it along the way. Uh, we're also going to have another tag, let's say image, and this is going to 
exists outside of the containing div. Uh, and this one, uh, we'll just leave it at this for now. This is going to represent our destination image. All right, so now we can actually start working on the TypeScript. And again, we're going to bounce back and forth between this HTML file. But I'm going to go into the TypeScript file. First up, I'm going to, I'm going to fix all of the indents uh, because I actually do like uh, four spaces instead of two. So my editor is set up with that. So it's going to cause some issues if I don't, if I don't correct it right now. So I'm going to save it. Um, now let's worry about uh, getting everything functional. Um, so we have the on init. Uh, we're going to import a few more because it's going to be uh, useful for what we're trying to accomplish. We're going to import the view child uh, because we're going to be referencing certain components inside of that HTML file. And that's going to be necessary because we don't have access to say the uh, query selector or uh, get by get by element ID, that kind of stuff. Uh, we want um, attributes that will exist on the particular tags that we choose to use. Um, and then we want access to the actual HTML element as well. So we're going to say element ref. So we're going to be using those uh, soon. Next up, let's go ahead and define those. So let's first define the view child. Uh, and then we're going to define uh, the rest of them as well. So let's let's jump back into the HTML file now. Let's go ahead and jump in. So this is going to be the source image. We're going to call that image. Um, so this is a um, reference attribute. So we can access it through the um, view child. But uh, it's also going to have some properties on it. Uh, let's go ahead and say that this is going to be uh, source. So this is a variable. Uh, you know, this is an image tag. We have a source. We can write it like uh, just a standard source, but that's not going to be a variable in that sense. Uh, so source equals, and I'm going to call this image source. So this image source variable is going to exist inside of our TypeScript file. Next up, let's do the same thing for uh, line four. So this destination image, we're not going to have a view child because uh, we don't need to access it directly. We only need to uh, be able to bind data to it. So we're going to say source. And this is going to represent image destination. And we're going to save it. And we're going to have class information on all of this as well. Uh, but for now, let's, let's just keep it as is. Uh, we're, we're going to work our way into it. So let's go back into the TypeScript file. Let's go ahead and now start grabbing references to each of those variables. I'm going to say inside of my class, I'm going to say at view child. I called it image inside of the HTML file. And then per uh, more recent versions of Angular, we also need to say static uh, false for this example. So we're going to say public. We're going to say image element. We're going to say element ref. And the reason why we're doing this is this is the variable that we're going to be accessing throughout the TypeScript. This is what it's referencing inside of the HTML. Um, so that's this is what we're going to use within this file. So we have that. Uh, let's go ahead and add uh, some in input properties. So we're going to say at input. Uh, we called something source. Um, so uh, that, that's the attribute for the image tag. Um, so let's go ahead and reference it inside of our um, TypeScript. So we're going to say public image source. And it's just a coincidence uh, that they are the same. String. We're going to say uh, we also have a, a destination, uh, but we're not going to we're not going to bind it uh, in the same sense that we just did. So we're going to say public image destination. It's going to be a string. We have private cropper, which is going to be cropper. Whoops, not that, just cropper, uh, because this is going to be actually part of cropper JS, uh, which we actually didn't import yet. So let's go ahead and import it. So we're going to say import cropper from cropper js so i'm going to save it so we have cropper um, now what we can do is we can work inside of our constructor method so the constructor method in this case uh, we just want to set the image destination to maybe null or blank uh, because it's not it's not quite ready to be used yet so we're going to say this dot image destination equals empty string because it is a string uh, just just for my sanity's sake i'm going to say public constructor just like I'm going to say public ng on init, not necessary. It's public by default. Um, what we want to do now is because this is a JavaScript library, uh, we need to make sure that the component has fully rendered before we try to use it. Um, so we can't do this in the ng on init because this is when the component initializes. What we actually have to do is we have to create another method 
we're going to call it public ng after view init. And this is where we're going to make use of our library. Um, so we're going to make use of cropper.js here. So we're going to say this.cropper equals new cropper. We're going to pass in the element for that element source. So this is this dot image element dot native element. And then we're going to pass in some property information. So property information for this example, we're going to say, is it zoomable? We're going to say false. So it's not zoomable. Is it going to be uh, scalable? We're going to say false as well. Is it going to be croppable? That's, that's what we want. So it's going to be croppable by default. Um, but we're going to, we're going to maintain a aspect ratio on this. So that way, uh, if I provide a square image, maybe I only want to crop square regions out of it. Uh, rather than a free text kind of free drag. Um, so I'm going to say aspect ratio is going to be one uh, versus some decimal value like 16 by nine or something like that. Um, and then I'm going to have an actual function of what happens when the crop happens. Um, so I'm going to say crop. And when that crop happens, I'm going to say constant canvas equals this dot cropper dot get cropped canvas it's already in my type ahead there and I'm going to add the data from that canvas to our destination image um, because it, we can't just provide a, a string there's no file we're going to be just providing the base 64 data pretty much so we're going to say this dot image destination equals canvas dot to data URL and this is going to be of type PNG for the file. So I'm going to save it. Uh, so if I were to run this, it, it might work. I think that we might have some styling issues, uh, but let's go ahead and try it. Actually, um, what we also want to make sure that we do is, you know, we have, we have these tags. We're not actually using it. We have this, I mean, we have this component. It's not being used. We just have it set up. Um, so what we also have to do is we have to actually use it and define a source image. Uh, so let's do that. Then, then we'll try to run it. Then we'll try to optimize any kind of CSS. Um, so let's go ahead into our app. Let's, let's find it. app component.ts file. Um, I'm going to fix the tabs again. This is just for my own sanity's sake. Um, after we do that, let's go ahead and make use of that tag. So let's go ahead and try it. And actually, I'm in the wrong file. Uh, so this could actually stay the same. Uh, what we want is we want the app component.h app component.html. So go ahead and select everything that's inside of the app component.html file. Let's remove it. Let's go ahead and say image. Actually, what do we call it? Let's go back into our image cropper TypeScript. Let's close out of app component.ts. We're not using it. Uh, our selector is app image cropper. Kind of long, kind of not relevant. Let's remove the app part of it. Uh, let's go into the HTML file again. Let's call it app cropper because that's what we just had in the selector. We're going to have a source variable. Uh, because if I go back into um, our TypeScript here, here we go. We have a source. Um, so that's that's what it's referencing, source. Let's go back into that file. Um, this is where we provide a path to an image, which I don't I don't think we have an image yet, so I have to go I have to go find one. Uh, let's go ahead and close it though. So image cropper. Um, so now let's worry about an image. And just to confirm, yeah, there's nothing inside of my assets. I do have an image we can use. Let's go ahead and say uh, copy. Uh, I have something in uh, my local computer here. It's a JPEG file. I'm gonna I'm gonna add it to the source directory. And what is it? Assets directory. So I'm gonna copy that in reboy.jpeg. Should exist over there now. Yeah, I added it here. Just a picture of myself. Uh, so let's go ahead and make use of it. So I'm going to say assets. I'm going to say angular, not angular, enraboy.jpg. I'm going to save it. Let's go ahead and do ng serve. Let's see where we, where we stand so far. And we'll review all of this at the end. So I'm going to go back into my web browser. I'm going to go to uh, localhost 4200. So it's there. I have uh, a crop box 
it's uh, again not styled so so great. Um, you can see the destination. This is actually the cropped image. Um, so let's let's go back and, and make some revisions. Make sure we we add some CSS to it, um, and it should make it a lot more attractive. Uh, so let's go into the image cropper CSS for the component. I mean, uh, and let's add some simple CSS. Um, so we can add some classes. So let's let's go ahead and worry about the container for our source image. So let's call it image container. Let's maybe say that the width is going to be 640 uh, pixels. Maybe the height is 480 pixels. And then we're going to float it to the left of the screen. And I am by no means a CSS expert. This is actually probably pretty poor CSS, um, but uh, you could always you could always make revisions on your own. This is just basic stuff. I'm going to call it image preview for the for the destination. You can call it image destination if you want or whatever whatever makes more sense to you. I'm going to say width is going to be 200 pixels, so something smaller. I'm going to say the height because this is going to be a perfect square given our aspect ratio is also going to be 200 pixels. I'm going to say that this is also floating left. And I'm going to say that the margin left between the container and the preview uh, is going to be, I don't know, 10 pixels. I'm going to save it. It's not being used yet, so we have to go in back into our image cropper component HTML file. Uh, let's go ahead and add those classes. So I'm going to say class equals image container. And then right here I have class equals image preview. And if I save it, it'll rebuild it because we're serving it with Angular. And you can see that now um, it looks a little more pleasant. And I can I can change the the box remember this is part of the image cropper CSS um, but it's aspect ratio one so I can't it's always going to be a perfect square um, and this is the preview uh, if I were to try to download the source image right here even though that it has the crop box there it would still be the source image but if I were to try to download this destination image well it's going to be exactly what I see in the destination so that's pretty cool stuff so let's go back into our our Visual Studio code uh, we'll just do some review uh, let me let me close out of um, all right. So just just to review, made it a little easier to see here. Uh, we created a new Angular project. Um, we we downloaded the Cropper JS um, JavaScript package, but uh, rather than using the CSS file that was inside of that package, we just went into our index.html file and added the CSS file from a CDN. You could always include it, however makes the most sense to you. Um, but for me, I, it made most sense to do it this way because it was easier. So then what we did is we went into uh, either our, our uh, component file that we created, so our HTML file for that, or the TypeScript. Uh, this is an image cropper component that we created for the sole purpose of being reusable every time we wanted to use it in our application. Uh, but inside of this file, we have an um, image container, so that way we can control the size of our source image editing area. Uh, we have this is just uh, represents that this is going to be a variable, so that way we don't have to use the curly brackets. Uh, but image source is a variable that we're using inside of our TypeScript file. Likewise, image destination is a variable. Uh, these are not bound. Uh, so this so we're, the the input that we have in the TypeScript file does not represent the input of our um, HTML file here. Uh, it represents our um, app component.html file. Uh, but essentially what we did inside of our TypeScript file is we loaded up uh, the image, the source image. We have the attribute on our component that is calling this particular component. We have our variables. Uh, we initialized the cropper uh, package. Uh, we provided our source image that we want to edit. We provide some setting information and there are a ton of different settings that you can use for this library. Uh, when it comes to actually cropping, this lifecycle function gets called crop. And uh, we're basically taking the cropped portion and we're adding it to the image destination variable, uh, which in return is automatically being bound to line four here. And then if we go into app component.html, uh, we downloaded an image, we added it to the assets directory. Uh, this is the name of our selector. This is the input variable that we're referencing. Um, and we have a fully functional croppable kind of application. So this is useful if you're ever uploading images uh, you can have your user crop them, and so that way you don't have to guess server side. You let the user define how they want to crop it. So it can be useful stuff, um, and uh, this can be rep reproduced in pretty much any framework. I do have a, 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 a an example floating around in view, um, so this is just the Angular version of it.